How you doing today guys? Welcome back to another day of 7 Great Math. Today we're going to continue reviewing for the uh, following uh, upcoming test that we're going to be having next week. And this is going to be TIC 7.4B, D, and E. And just to give you a reference on that, it's mostly going to be about unit rates and percent change. Okay, unit rates and percent change. We're going to have a lot of part over total. And this is what this assignment is about. So. I'm gonna try to do as much as we can. And there's 17 questions on this review about these uh, three ticks. Again, tick 7.4B, D, and E for seven grade math. So, number one, it says a recipe cost that uh, makes 18 cookies for three cups of sugar. How much sugar is needed to make two dozen cookies? So, this is kind of like a unit rate, but we can do this part over total. We're going to do this with part over total. So let's go ahead and pay attention. So part over total, uh, the things that the two things that we know, we know cookies and we know sugar. Okay. We know cookies and we know sugar. Okay. So uh, actually it's going to be cross products. So this is going to be two fractions and we're going to find the unknown. So the first one is three quarters of cup and I know and that three quarters is going to be 0 0.75. If we talk about money, it's 0 0.375. So these two go together. They're related to each other. For 18 cookies, you make three cups. You need three cup, three quarter cups of sugar. So we're going we're gonna to keep those together. So for 0 0.75, you make 18 cookies. Now the question is, how much sugar do you need if you need to make two dozen cookies? On the previous video, you can check it over here, we talk about dozens. One dozen, as the name says, kind of like in Spanish, dozen means doce or twelve. So in this case, we have two twelves, which is going to be twenty-four. So, wait, I got this backwards, so I have sugar and cookies. And we're gonna keep them together. So the other fraction is gonna be cookies on the top, and I need to know how much sugar. And all you gotta do is cross products or body flies. So you're gonna do 18 times six equals, and then 24 times uh, 0 0.75, 24 times 0.75, which gives you 18. Now the next step, divide by 18 on both sides. So X equals to one. So you're gonna need one full cup of sugar. The answer is one cup. And that's it for that one. Next one, it says number two is gonna be a lot like number 17. So if we don't get to number 17, at least you know how to do it. Number two, it says a can of juice contains 175 calories per 2.5 servings. If you look at the Every time you buy food, they give you the calories per safe servings, and sometimes it's more than one serving. Which of the following is not equivalent of calories per serving? This is a unit rate, and we're look the keyword right here is per serving. That's gonna go on the bottom of the uh, fraction per serving or the division. Top uh, and and whenever we do the uh, fractions, it's top pin bottom out. So. This is going to be a kind of, of a little bit process because we are actually looking for the wrong answer. But I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to do this. So we have calories per serving. And we're going to start with my original. My original is that one right there. So I know that 175 calories equals 2.5 servings. Now we're going to take A and we're going to compare it okay just like when we did proportions a while back you can check that video hopefully you, I put the card right here on proportions we're gonna compare them and I'm gonna show you a quick way to do so really quick so 280 the calories I put them on top so I'm gonna keep them on the on the top and the bottom is four now for this one you will have to do Tebow on both of them and make sure you get the same answer but a faster way, instead of dividing, because I know a lot of you don't like to divide, I'm going to do 
a cross multiplication, a rule of three simple, something like that. So, I'm going to multiply these two numbers and I'm going to write the number on top. So, 175 times 4 gives me 700. I'm just going to write it like this. And then I'm going to multiply these two numbers and I'm going to put it on top. 280 times 2.5 is going to be 700. If those two numbers match, then it is proportional, okay? That's what we're looking for, proportionality. But the act, actually right here, we're looking for the one that is not the same. So A is not my answer. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the second one, B. And I'm gonna start again, calories and servings. The original, I'm still using the original, 175 over 2.5 equals, the next one is 910, I'm keeping the calories with the calories and 13 on the bottom. When I multiply these two like this, 175 times 13 gives me 2275. Now this, these are not gonna be diff uh, the same because they're different numbers, okay? Don't expect to have the same numbers. What I care about is that this number is the same as the other number that I get on the other side. And 200 and, uh, 910, times 2.5 also gives me 22.75. These two numbers are the same, therefore they're equivalent or proportional, but I'm looking for the not equivalent, so B is not my answer. Next one, I'm gonna try the next one, C. Same thing, calories per serving, 175 over 2.5, that's my original one. And the next one says, 525 over 8, okay? Again, cross multiply, put it on top. 175 times 8 gives me 1312.5. And when I multiply these two, I get 13, no, I get 1400. Now, are these two numbers the same? No, there are not. That is actually the answer that I'm looking for. So my answer is going to be C. And you check. You can check the other one. When you multiply D, you're going to get 1575 and 1575 on both of them. So in this case, again, that's how you find proportionality the fast way. Instead of dividing, you can just compare the two of them. Next one, number three. Uh, we're finding the unit rate, the amount per hour. We're looking per hour, keyword right here, per hour. That's what's gonna go on the bottom of the fraction, okay? So in this case, I have 16 square feet per hour. So 16 divided by 2 thirds, or you can also write this like 16 divided by 2 thirds, and then we're gonna do keep change flip, okay? When we do that, we get 16 times 3 halves, put a one under, multiply straight across, and you get 48 divided by 2, which is 24, which is A. That's how you do that one, keep change flip. The next one, number four, is a percent increase. Percent increase, number seven and number eight are gonna be very similar, so I'm gonna do one of them first, and then I will come back. If I have time, I go back to the other one. I mean, number four is just gonna be like seven and eight as well. Four, seven, and eight is the same concept. So, percent increase, we talked about that before, and we have a formula which is amount change, so bi uh, big number minus small number divided by the original times 100, or instead of multiplying, just move the decimal two places to the right, and that's gonna be the answer. So, big number, this is gonna be 54. Basically, it says the amount that increased, that's the key word, from, that's the original, the from is the original, 48 to 54, by what percent did Amanda increase, increase by what percent, that's what we're finding. 
So to find the percent increase is the big number minus the small number. So 54 minus 48 divided by the original. The from is the original. The from is the original. That's the keyword to recognize the original. The original is not always going to be the bigger number. Okay? The original is 48. So the top is going to be 6 over 48. And then when you divide that, TiVo, you get 0 0.125 and you can either multiply this by 100 or you can move the decimal two places to the right so the answer is going to be 12.5 percent which is going to be d so far so good moving on <laughs> number five is just part over total it says there were 25 questions on a science test this is what we do whenever we grade the part over total. How many you got wrong divided by the total questions. That's it. Here are five correct for, um, here were the numbers for correct five students. So Fred, 21. William is actually Wilma. 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 So Fred, 21. William, 23. Barney, 22. Betty, 19. And Bam, 20. Which students earn a score above 85%? So we're find, trying to find out how many who made over uh, 85. This is just going to be a part over total, and you're going to do it for every single one of them. So Fred, 21 over 25. 25 is my total questions. And these are going to be the part. So, there's two ways to do that. You can do TiVo, but I'm going to take the easy approach. And I can say 25 times 4, in this case 4, gives me 100. And if I multiply the top by the same, this one is going to give me 84. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So, did Fred made at 85 or better? No. So, Fred is not. So, you can cross that one out and you can cross this one out. We're going to do the same thing for Wilma. Wilma made a 23 over 25. And I'm going to show you. You can do this times 4, both of them. So this is going to be 92 over 100. So she made a 92. The other way to do this is Tivo. 23 divided by 25. And you get 0 0.92. Then 1, 2. And you get 92. Same thing. So Wilma did made over 85. So Wilma is not on C, so it must be B, but I got to check the other ones just to make sure, right? So Barney, Barney made a 22 over 25. If I multiply times 4, why times 4? Because I'm looking for whatever gives me 100. 25 times 4 gives me 100. If you don't have an easy number like that, then you will have to do TiVo. Okay? If you don't have an easy number like that, you will have to do TiVo. If the bottom was 20, you can multiply that times 5. If the bottom was 10, you can multiply that times 10 and do the same thing for the top. So this one will give me uh, 22 times 4 is 88, which is 100. So Barney made an 88. So yes, my answer is B. And by the way, Bam. Betty made a 76. And Bam made an 80. If you continue doing the same process. <laughs> Number six. We're finding the taxes. What is the amount of sales tax? What did I tell you before? Every time you have a percent, convert that to decimal and multiply. So one two add a zero so your percent as a decimal is 0 0.0625 and we're gonna multiply that by the original amount you can put them in any order that you want and at the end you're gonna have four seven four nine three seven five and then you're gonna move the decimal how many places 
one, two, three, four, five, six. At the end, you're gonna move the decimal of six places. One, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So, this will be, again, if you're looking for the taxes, the number has to be less than the, than the actual price most of the time, for that matter. So you can automatically eliminate that. And if you round this, this is gonna be $4.75, which is C. That's how you do number six. If you were asked to price the uh, total price, you will add that to the to the taxes, okay? And you'll find the new total. <coughs> I'm gonna skip number eight and come. Oh, actually, let's let's go ahead and do. What time is it? Let's skip it and then come back to that. And we're gonna skip number. Uh, Seven and eight are gonna be like number four. Same thing for this one. If we have time, we come back to those. Number nine. This is something that you might be able to do without any math. It says, it's estimated that 20.4% of the US population in the year 2050 will be over the age of 65. Which number is not equivalent to 20.4%? So in this case, look at this. We don't care about this. We don't care about that. We only focus on the percent. Remember, every time you have a percent, convert that to decimal. And in this case, you have different forms of percent. So if you move one, two, you get 0 0.204. Look at one of the answers. You're looking for the one that is not correct. So this one is one of the answers, but it's correct actually. Now, every time you have a percent, you can make it a fraction just by putting it over 100. So if you have 20.4, you can just put it over 100 and see if that's one of your choices. Yeah, and yes, it is right there. Now, look at A. If I, they added a zero on the bottom. And to add a zero on the bottom, you gotta move the decimal one place to the right on the top. So if we move this right here and add a zero, that looks like A. And automatically, whenever you converted this to a decimal, this number is not the same as this one. That's 2.04 and my decimal was actually 0 0.204. So that's what tells me that something is wrong with that one and you're looking for the incorrect answer. Number 10, unit rates, it says, and this is a little more than unit rates. It says, a generator can run for 11 hours on three gallons of gasoline. If the gasoline costs $3 per gallon, 11 hours on three gallons of gasoline, what is the closest to the cost per hour to run the generator. What is which is the closest to the cost per hour to run the generator? So first of all, we gotta know how much gasoline per hour, okay? Per hour. So unit rate. So we're looking per hour and gallons. Every time you're talking about time, the unit goes on the bottom. So let's look at this one right here. I have eleven three gallons for 11 hours. We're just gonna do TiVo. When we divide this, the three goes inside, I get 0 0.27 and it keeps repeating. The two number, two seven, two seven, two seven, keeps repeating. So this is 27 ga uh, cents or gallons per hour. 0 0.27 gallons per hour, right? Now, what is the, cl the closest cost per hour to run the generator? So, we know that one gallon is three dollars, uh, okay? So now it says per gallon, per gallon. Whatever the per is, is gonna go on the bottom. So, it says, oh no, per hour, per hour, in this case, right here, per hour. Again, hour and money. So $3 per hour 
and I uh, gallons per hour, this is 0 0.27. So all I gotta do is divide, or actually, so I know that I have 0.27 gallons per hour, so I gotta find the price for 0.27 gallons. So one gallon is $3, so all I gotta do is 0 0.27 times three, and it gives me 0 0.81 repeats. So the closest one per hour, per gallon, is gonna be 82 cents. 82 cents per hour to run the generator. Number 11, Bradley answered 80 questions on his science test correctly. There were 30 questions. This is just like the one that we did on number five. Kind of like the, like five. So this is a part over total equals percent over 100. So my he got 80% correct. How many did he not answer correctly? So. I'm looking for this right here. My total questions is 30. I don't know how many he got wrong or he got right. I know that he scored 80% correct out of the 100. So all I gotta do is cross products. So I'm gonna get 100x equals 2400. I divide by 100, so x is 24. However, he got 24 correct. So how do you find how many he got wrong? You subtract 30 minus 24, which is six. He got six incorrect, right? Number 12, Josh worked out at a gym for two hours. His working consisted of stretching for 21 minutes, jogging 45 minutes, and lifting weight the remaining amount of time. What percent of Jazz's workout was spent lifting weights? All right, so on this one, we are going to have to find the, uh, we're gonna have to do a few conversions right now. So, I know that she worked out two hours, but the thing is right here, I'm giving minutes, minutes. I need to find out what percent was lifting weights, okay? Now, first of all, my, what I will do first is convert the hours to minutes. In this case, two hours equals 120 minutes. How do I know that? Because one hour is 60 minutes. Now, this is gonna be my total. Now, I know that she spent 21 minutes jogging and 45 minutes lifting weights. So if I combine those two, I know how much she's, she spent doing something else. So 21 plus 45 gives me 66. So if I find the percent for this, if I do this right, I know that she spent 66 minutes doing something else other than lifting. So if I subtract those 66 minutes, I get 54. This is how much she spent lifting weights. However, I'm looking for what percent. So I'm gonna do this in a percent over total kind of thing. So this is my part over total. So 54 minutes lifting weights out of the 120 minutes, you do TiVo and you get 0 0.45. And then convert to percent, you smooth the decimal one, two. So 45% of the time she spent lifting weights. Next one, number 13 and 14 are gonna be very similar. We have multi-step process right here, but it's unit rate most of all says, Mr. Nelson sold 147 bags of popcorn and 260 bottles of waters in three days. In three days. So he did this in three days. At this rate, and you know his unit rate because he's telling you rate, how many more bottles of water than bags of popcorn will he sell in five days? 
So it's easier for me to find out how much, how many bags and bottles it sells per day. So that's what we're gonna do. So popcorn, we're gonna find out how many popcorn he sells per day. Per day, that's the keyword, per day. So 147 bags. So this is the popcorn and this is the bottles. Water, 216. And we're gonna divide that by three. Why by three? Because that's for three days. When I do that, in this one, I can do TiVo. So this will do be 147 divided by three, and that's gonna give me 49. 49 per day. Same thing with this one, and this one is gonna give me 72 per day. So now it's saying, what about in five days? How many more bottles of water will you sell than, um, than popcorn? So all I gotta do is multiply this times five. So multiply this times five, and I'm gonna get 245. 49 times five is 245. 72 times five, gives me 360. And to find the difference, all I gotta do is subtract 360 minus 245, which gives me 115, which is my answer, and it's gonna be right there. 150 bottles of water, more than popcorn. Multi-step process. Now, Number 14 is very similar. Every two days, a scientist spends 1.5 hours. Remember, every time we're talking about hours and his unit rates, the hours goes on the bottom. <laughs> Observing dolphins and 3.5 hours sea lions. At this rate, how many total hours will they spend doing this in six days? So the Easiest thing to do is find the amount per day. So for dolphins, is two days, 1.5 hours. So all I gotta do is divide 1.5, 1.25 divided by two gives me 1.5 hours divided by two gives me 0 0.625 hours per day, watching dolphins. So a little more than half an hour watching dolphins a day. And for sea lions, the same thing. 3.5 divided by two, which is 1.75. So an hour and 45 minutes per day watching sea lions. So if I multiply this times six, why six? Because it's right there. I get 3.75 hours and 10.5 hours in the six days. And to find the total, how many total hours? All I gotta do is add these two. And when I add this, I get four hours and a quarter. Four hours, I mean 14 hours and a quarter, which is B. All right, so for number 15, it says, Xavier plans to run 14 laps around the track. Each lap is 400 yards. And so far, Javier has run 1,680 yards around the track. What percent of the run has he completed? So we're looking for what percent? So we're looking for a percent. However, we're given 14 laps and we're given yards. Each lap is 400 yards. He needs to run 14 and he has already run that many. So this is gonna be a part over total question, but not that simple. We're gonna have to do two things. First of all, we need to know how much total, because it's a part over total, how many total yards he needs to run. In this case, I know that he needs to run 14 laps and that each yard, each, each lap is 400 yards. To, to find the total number of yards, I just have to multiply those two numbers and I get 5,600. Now I can use that number. This is gonna be my total number of yards 
that he needs to run and substitute the values in. So this is gonna be my part, just how much he has already run, 1680. So this is gonna be part over total, 1680 over 5600. You can just go ahead and do table, top and bottom out. So 1680 divided by 5600. You can eliminate the two zeros, whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, after you divide, you get 0 0.3. However, you need to convert that into a percent. So all you got to do now is move the decimal one, two, fill in the zeros, the blanks with zeros. So the answer is going to be 30%. He has run. 30%. That's my answer, B. Number 16. Number 16 is going to be uh, about the same. It says Marcella bought a 25-ounce bottle of olive oil and she used 60%. So this is going to be kind of like number 10. It says Marcella bought 25-ounce bottle of olive oil for 588 she used 60% in two weeks. Which of the following is the closest to the cost of oil? Look, anytime you have a closest to, you're not necessarily gonna get the, the right answer that you get at, on your solution, on your answer choices. You're looking for whatever is the closest to. Now, the first thing that we gotta do on this one, it says, we gotta find how much is the price per ounce because we have ounce bottles, we have percentages. So if we found the price per ounce, we can go ahead and do that. And to do that, all we gotta do is divide the price divided by the ounces. 5.88 divided by 25, top and bottom out, 5.88 divided by 25. When you do that, you get approximately after you round, you actually get 0 0.2352. So we round up to 24 cents. That's the price per ounce, 24 cents per ounce. Now, it says that she used 60% of the bottle. Now we're gonna do the part over total. I know the total is 25 ounces and that she used 50%, percent over 100. Part over total equals percent over 100. Solve in the values. The part, that's what I don't know. I know the total number of ounces, by the way, these are ounces, and this is percentages. 60%, 100%, and this is 25 ounces. All we gotta do now, cross products or butterfly. So you're gonna have 100X equals to 1500. You can either divide by 100 or you can go ahead and cross out the two zeros. So X equals to 15. So this is gonna be 15 ounces, right here, 15 ounces. However, that's not the price that I'm looking for. I'm looking, how much is that? How much are 15 ounces? So I know that one ounce is gonna be approximately 24 cents. So all we have to do now is multiply 15 times the price per ounce, which is 24 cents, and we're gonna get 3.6. However, we're talking about money, don't forget that zero at the end. So the closest one to this one is going to be D. Multi-step problem. It might seem like a lot, it's easy, but it's just long. Next one, number 17, Jessica skated. This is kind of like number two, which we're gonna do uh, proportions four laps in 82 seconds. So laps and seconds, okay? That's my proportion. Which of the following is an equivalent rate of skating? So number two, we're looking for the not equivalent. Number 17, we're looking for the equivalent. So how we're gonna do this? We're gonna take the original, which is this one, and write it, four over 82. And we're gonna compare it to the other ones, A. This is gonna be six over 120. The fastest way to do this is cross multiply like that and write it on top. So four times 120 gives you 480. Six times 82 gives you 492. We're multiplying, remember. 
If the two numbers match, you're good. If not, they're not proportional. So in this case, A is not my answer. I'm gonna do the same thing again. 482, I'm always gonna use the original one, and then I'm gonna take this one right here. Six over 130. These two, six times 82, I don't need to multiply it again because I already did it right here, which is 492. And four times 130 gives me 520. These two are still not the same, so it's not B. So I'm gonna try C. Again, the original 482 equals has to be equal to 10 over 205. These two, easy, is 820. See how you always have to multiply them? Because the numbers are never gonna be the same on top, not necessarily. And when you multiply four times 205, you just put it on top and you also get 820. If those two numbers matches, then they are proportional. And that's, the, that's what we're looking for. So my answer must be C, okay? Now we're gonna go back to number seven and eight since we have time for that. And remember seven and eight were just like number four. Number seven, it says the price of gold went from, from, this is percent increase, okay, or decrease. It went from 460 to 483. What was the percent change in the price of gold? From is always gonna be the original. Now look at the answer choices. Before you do anything, look at the answer choices. Did the price go up or down? In this case, the original was 460. It went up, so it was increased. So you can automatically delete the answers that says decrease. You can automatically delete B and D because I know the price went up. Now the formula is right there. Big number minus the small number divided by the original. That's what we're gonna do. Big, 483 minus 460 divided by the original is always the from one times 100. So that's gonna be 23 over 460 and then times 100. When you divide these two, you get 0 0.05, and instead of multiplying times 100, all you gotta do is move one and two, so this is gonna turn to 5%. And it's increase, of course, so it's not A, it has to be C. <laughs> the next one, same process. Look, it's already telling you, it went from 40 to 83. It increased, it's already telling you that it increased so why would you care about the decrease right there? Now, again, same process, big minus small. So it's 83 minus 40 divided by the original, 40. So the change is 43 over 40. Now look at the change. It changed by more than 100%. How do I know that? Because 40 was 100%. And if it's over the original amount, then it's gonna be over 100%. With that being said, you can already spot the answer. The answer has to be A, but I'm gonna prove that to you. 43 divided by 40 gives you 1.075. The last step is to multiply by 100 or just go ahead and move the decimal one and two, which gives you 107.5 percent and we already know that it's increased so my answer yes is indeed a well that is it for this one guys if you find this video in interest if you learned something today hit the like, like button don't forget to comment share and subscribe link down in the description if you want to support the channel and i'll see you on the next one goodbye